What's up everyone, Some Guy here with another Alliance War video. Season 24, one number 3, we are versing against Salty. Um, we've never versed him before either, I believe this is another mismatch. I believe they were um, in Plat 3 last season. But anyway, going up here with this Korg on Ebb and Flow Knockdown. Um, I will be using a lot of Quake for this war, um, spoiler alert. Um, one of them actually goes south, kind of. Um, but anyway, for this fight, it's just a regular quick and shake fight. Um, you just gotta knock him down while he's stunned and concussed to shut down the protection node. And from there on, it's a uh, smooth sailing. Up next, we have this Havoc here on Ebb and Flow Knockdown and Heavy Hitter. Uh, very common placement for him just because his first medium, uh, you can't parry stun him. Uh, it's a non-contact, so uh, and you can't punish his heavy since uh, it's on Heavy Hitter. I will be using uh, Guillotine 2099 to ramp her up. Um, it's a very slow fight. Usually the first fights for Guillotine 2099s are always very slow, especially on uh, these Ebb and Flow uh, nodes. Um, it's a pretty good matchup for Guillotine just because she has her armor up um, for the most part, so you don't have to worry about the plasma damage from uh, Havoc. The only thing you probably have to look out for is his uh, heavy attack since it is on heavy hitter. Uh, a lot of times he will be throwing his medium followed by a heavy attack and then a medium followed by another heavy attack. So that can push you back um, quite far and get yourself cornered. Uh, and you don't want to get yourself cornered against a uh, heavy hitter um, no champ just because it would be pretty hard to get out of it. Um, I, I am starting to get cornered here as I speak um, with his uh, medium. But luckily he throws two mediums over there and I was able to get out of it. I do throw my SP1 here to get myself more spacing, um, but and I get clipped there from missing a parry, but my uh, cloak does save me. Uh, plus the gu my guillotine is uh, max 6, so the combo shield does kick in 100% uh, of the time. Moving on to section 2 here, we have this Killmonger on Footloose and Kinetic Transference, uh, another very common placement. I will be using Magic, um, I am putting up a Advanced Power Boost to make my life easier, as well as some Mystic Power Boosts, uh, or Mystic Special Boosts, uh, so I can get the SP2 cycle faster. Basically, I want to start off by um, getting myself to an SP2 before he gets any power. Um, I usually parry to give myself more openings for um, combos, but I decided to just hold block to bait out his heavy or him um, charging into me. Uh, but the connect transfer sometimes can can mess it up at sometimes, I believe. Uh, but once I get into my SP2, it should be pretty easy from here. Uh, I just gotta have to lock him in the corner with uh, some intercepts, standing intercepts. 
um, as well as some light intercepts, and it should be good from there for the most part. Moving forward, we have this uh, rank 2 Rhino here on Ebb and Flow Intercept um, and Sadis. Very common placement. I thought about using uh, She-Hulk, um, but I couldn't fit her on the on the team. Um, Quake will do as well. Uh, it'd just be a longer fight just because uh, of the protection node. Uh, you can shut down the protection if you go for an intercept while he's concussed. But it, it is a bit risky since the uh, timing is very... The, oh, the window is very small uh, and you can mess up pretty easily but um, I boosted it up big just so I can make sure I don't time out against this Rhino I believe if he's duped it's uh, he gains more physical resistance so it's easier to time out uh, luckily this Rhino is not duped so I shouldn't have too much of trouble with him with some big boosts All right, moving on to the next fight. This is a fight where I almost messed up. Um, this one is a Abomination Immortal on a Ebb and Flow Intercept and Redouble Determination. Very common placement. Um, he's either on this one or Path, I think, 8 on a re another Readable Determination node. I've uh, quaked him before. Um, this one is not on... Well, we don't have Stubborn anymore, so he is quakeable now as long as you don't hit into him or make any contact with him uh, since he has a chance to put poison on you. Uh, this one's only in rank 2, so I wasn't too worried about uh, timing out. Plus, I threw on some big boosts, but I accidentally uh, I accidentally threw a heavy there and it, I, I think it crit and it uh, kicked in the protection node. So right now, there's two protection on him, so I'm doing basically no damage. So right now I'm like, okay, I need to shut. I need to get an intercept in to shut down the protection. Luckily, he was far away, and I was able to get a nice intercept in. However, I did get a poison debuff on me, but luckily I was boosted pretty pretty big with the uh, health boost and stuff. So the poison doesn't do too bad, too much of damage to me. That only takes me down about uh, 88 or so. Um, so that was pretty scary there. I almost thought I was about to lose this fight um, just from me accidentally throwing a heavy and triggering protection. Uh, who knew uh, Quake can hit that hard with her heavy, right? But um, I was pretty boosted, so I think that was the reason why the um, protection did trigger. He, uh, he was also really close to his SP1. If I mess up another heavy, he will probably get an SP1, and it will be pretty dicey in the corner trying to evade his SP1s. Uh, so luckily that didn't happen. All right, moving on to the mini boss island here. We have this Emma Frost on uh, Rage, a very common placement for her. Um, I will be using my ramped up guillotine. Uh, usually, I'm not too uh, worried about this fight, or usually, I don't. I usually do pretty well in this fight, at least. I'm not too um, concerned about her 
uh, reverse controls on her SP1. Um, however, this time I did mess up a little bit and I did forget about her power sting on her SP1. So I'm gonna take some big power sting damage um, in this fight. So right here, I'm trying to back up to give myself more space. Oh, it's not on this one, it's on the next, ne next SP1. I always like to give myself more space so I have more time to react. Uh, but this time, as I'm backing up, she throws her SP1 and it basically looked like I'm dashing into her. I did get a power stay on me and I just went through my SP2, but I forget about the power stay and it does like half my health. So right now I'm like, oh, and the SP2 also triggered rage. And I threw my SP, I threw my heavy to try and get a, um, a combo shield and the heavy also triggered rage. So that, okay, no more heavies and no more uh, SP2s. So now I'm just trying to not die or um, I don't want to get my health too low uh, just because even though she does have the region at about 50% health, the assassin range can sometimes uh, prevent that from happening so I really don't want to get myself into there so I'm just doing some intercepts luckily guillotine's light intercepts are pretty far so right now I do want to um, ramp her up again just in case I would need her for the boss fight so I was able to get her down to three percent I wanted to hit her block to get down to two percent to throw my um, sp3 first just to be more safe um, and I was able to do that and she the sp3 was able to kill her and I was able to uh, keep her ramped up all right, and the next two fights are all, all basically going to be Quake fights. So there's going to be uh, Quake pretty much ignores all of the nodes on both of them. Uh, so it's just going to be a regular Quake and Shake fight. I threw on a extra boost just to make sure I do enough damage. Um, just because that one time, or last war, or I, two wars ago maybe, I think I timed out on the rank 3 um, Nick Fury on Ebb and Flow intercept. This one doesn't have Ebb and Flow, so I don't have to worry about timing out as much. But I threw it on just in case. Uh, because of the class disadvantage. Uh, Quake and Nick Fury shouldn't be too hard. The only thing you have to look out for is his second life, just because he becomes stun immune. Uh, I think the only other tricky thing is when he goes from his first life to second life, you just have to make sure you're uh, on point with the uh, transition, because uh, him coming out of it can sometimes catch you off guard, uh, but just because if he's stunned midway and he's just come out of stun, um that's the one thing you have to look out for and also just not messing up because if you do mess up he hits pretty hard especially in his second life and if he gets a, a light uh light hit light um if he gets a last a fourth light hit on you the bleed can do a lot of damage to you um yeah i think that's happened to me in the past a long time ago but uh you just have to play perfectly so right now i was able to get into a good good transition to his, uh, second life here so from here on it's just a uh, regular quick and shake it's kind of like a stun immune All right, moving on to the last fight of the war. This was a rank, I forget which rank, a rank three Dr. Doom. Uh, unfortunately, it is kind of a waste on this just because Quake works very well against him on this node. Uh, just a regular Quake and Shake fight. Uh, not much to talk about. All right, this uh, last cycle here doesn't quite kill him, but I just threw my heavy to finish him off. Uh, that'd be it for me for this war. Uh, we do end up taking the win. Like I said, this one is kind of a mismatch. Uh, I hope they weren't too salty about it. Uh, but we are still in tier two, multiplier seven. So we're hoping to keep, keep climbing so we can get into tier one to get more points. Uh, but that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.